In this video, I'll show you how to create an S3 bucket. So here we can see that I'm already logged into my AWS console. And we've got all of our different services listed here on the main screen. I'm going to go ahead and click on S3. And that's under our storage services. And the first thing that we really get prompted to do here is to create a bucket. So let's go ahead and click on the create bucket button and I'm going to name my bucket something unique. So in my case, I'm going to just call my bucket trainer tests and I'll go ahead and hit create. So now my bucket has been successfully created and you'll see here we have this bucket called trainer tests. We can see some of the details and make some changes over here on the right. This is the normal screen you'll see when you go into S3 after you've already created at least one bucket. Now we could have multiple buckets and they'd all be shown here, but at the moment we've only created a single bucket and now we see our interface for that one bucket that we have so far. So at the moment we've selected properties or we can select none or we can select transfers to see information about our bucket. And as we go through this course, we're going to dig deeper into a lot of these properties that you see here, like versioning and events and, and um, logging and all of these other options. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time digging into the properties of our bucket at this moment. So let's go to our trainer tests bucket here. And now we're going to take some actions. Right, so here you can see uh, the different actions that we have available on this bucket. We can create a new bucket. We can delete this bucket. We can empty the bucket to get all the data out of it. So let's go into our test bucket. We'll click on it here. And at the moment we can see that we don't have any files here. Now, if I want to, I can start by creating some subfolders within that bucket. But first I just want to upload a file. So I'm going to put some file into this bucket. I'll go ahead and hit upload. And now I can basically drag and drop files and folders into this bucket. Now, the thing you need to be aware of here with the free tier, there are limitations. And in real life, if you're using this and, and you're paying for it, the more data that you add here, the more you're going to be charged. So I'm going to simply select a file and go ahead and add it. There we go. So I've chosen a very small file called intro video .html. And I'm going to go ahead and start the upload of this file. And there we go. I have successfully uploaded my first file to an S3 bucket. Let's upload a few more files. So I'm going to go ahead and hit upload here. I'm going to choose add files and I'm going to browse to a directory on my machine. And I'm going to choose a couple files that we can easily display. It's like some logo images and, and things like that. And I'm going to go ahead and hit open here and upload these other two files as well. So now I've got a few files in my bucket and right here on the right, we can see the transfer screen. So move from properties to transfers because I have transfers in progress and it'll show me the status of these transfers. I can always go back to properties or I can even go ahead and choose a specific file within my bucket and go ahead and look at the properties of that particular file. And let's dig a little bit deeper into the properties of this file. So here we see the bucket that it's in, the name of the file. We see a link, which we'll try and click on in just a moment. And then we see some of our metadata, right? When was it modified? Who's the owner? All of that sort of stuff. So let me go ahead and click on this file. And what we get is an access denied message. We haven't created any permissions for this file yet. So we're not going to be able to access this file until we grant ourselves the ability to access this file. And if we go here under permissions, we can start to configure some of the policies that are going to be applied to this file. Okay. So let's go ahead and change the permissions on this object. I'm going to click add more permissions and under grantee, I'm going to go ahead and choose whatever I want to choose here. At the moment, I'm going to choose everyone. And I'm going to make this available for open and download to everyone. And I'll go ahead and hit save. 
And what I've just basically done is make this object public. And if we look at the logo.jpg file here, which we currently have selected, if I click on actions, I have the ability to also make it public right here. And it'll give me a little message that says, are you sure you want to make logo.jpg public? I'll go ahead and say, okay. And then we'll go ahead and look at the properties of this file one more time. And we can see the permissions that are currently granted. So let's try clicking on this link once more. And there we go. We've got our trainer tests logo. So we successfully opened that file. Now in this case, I have plenty of copies of my logo and these other files really aren't that important to me. So I may never need to access these files again, or maybe if these files are lost, I'm not really going to care that much. You know, I'm going to be able to replicate them. I'm going to be able to reproduce them fairly easily. And so if that's the case, I might not want to use the default storage class in S3. I might want to use reduced redundancy. That's going to be less expensive, right? Now with reduced redundancy, my durability isn't the same as it is with standard. With reduced redundancy, one in 10,000 objects could potentially be lost. And that's really all that Amazon guarantees with reduced redundancy. You know, I can live with that in this case. Or maybe I don't use these files very often. And so I can go ahead and say object logo is going to be standard infrequent access. So if I want it, I want to be able to get it very quickly. But I don't think I'm going to want it very often. And so this again is a less expensive tier of storage. Or I can just go with the standard tier of storage, which of course gives me that extremely high durability. And then I can choose to encrypt my file as well. So I'm going to go ahead and encrypt it with AES-256. And I'm going to choose the reduced redundancy option. And I'll go ahead and hit save. And now we can see here, uh, the process is complete. So now my file has been moved to reduced redundancy storage and it's been encrypted with AES-256. And if you'll notice here, I have other files as well. I have my square logo.jpg file and that file is still in the standard storage class. It's still not encrypted. I have my intro video file, which of course is also not encrypted and it's also not in reduced redundancy. So unless I specifically move these other files to those different storage classes or encrypt these other files, they're not going to be moved or encrypted. Now, if I want to do a mass configuration and take all of these files and move them to reduced redundancy and encrypt all of them, I can just click next to every file that I want to perform that operation on and go ahead and hit save. So now all three of these files are going to be reduced redundancy and AES-256 encrypted. I can also create a folder. I'm going to call this folder training. And if I want to, I can take these files and move them into this folder. So to move these files, I'll just go ahead and click on each of them. I'll go to actions and choose cut. And then I'll go ahead and go into my training folder and under actions, I'll choose paste. And we can see here on the transfer screen that all three files are being moved. And now all three of my files are inside of this training folder. And now I can go ahead to this training folder and configure some of my options there. So under properties, I can choose a storage class for this entire folder. And I can choose an encryption method for this entire folder as well. And that can make this a little bit easier to manage. What files are stored where? If I know I have a bunch of files, that are going to be on reduced redundancy storage, I'll simply put them all in the same folder. Okay, so now we've created our Amazon S3 bucket. We've uploaded some files into it. We've moved those files to the appropriate storage class. We've encrypted those files. And we've also created a folder so that we can control the storage class and the encryption globally across all objects in that folder.